and welcome to Maker Fun Moments powered by Brilliant Labs. I'm Nelly, and I'm so glad you could be here with us today. Did you know that 87% of Canadians have a green space close to home? Can you draw a circle and color in 90% of it? So 87% isn't 100%. This means that not all Canadians have easy access to green spaces. To help make Canada and the world a better place, the United Nations has created 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Let's consider goal number 11, sustainable cities and communities. There are more urban centers in the world than ever before. This means designers and planners are needed to help create safe spaces that will help citizens be healthy and happy. Today, we're gonna learn about what makes a community and how we can design communities of the future. Now let's get making. We're going to be looking at my farm of the future. Here I have a water treatment. This is the wastewater. This is the clean water. The clean water goes to the animals, and then the wastewater. It's recycled and it gets cleaned and it goes to the animals. And here I have a green mill where it sells grains to people in need. And it sells grains to farmers that are selling grains. Over here we have a garage that I fix people's cars in. People's cars that are really broken, I put in the back until I can find someone that can help me. Here we have the compost. But they're compost inside of the bin, and then the then we farmers use them to them to plant crops and flowers and here is the crop for food bank area where the silo has crops in it for the food bank and then people in need come and get the food. Thanks for being here me and my farm in the future. I wonder what you're going to make. Bye!
first thing I would ask is, can you tell me your full name and job title and what your job means, what, what you do? Uh, my name is uh, Francis Jacob Jadis, but I go by my middle name, Jacob. And currently I'm employed with the Abigail First Nation as part of their council. So I oversee a wide variance of projects. In terms of how water is connected to our communities, um, what do you think is important when it comes to thinking about how our communities can be successful in the future? Um, the future is going to hold a bunch of challenges for us. Um, water technologies will be one, but one of the major focuses I see, even in my industry when it comes to utilities, I would consider myself a utility, is um, renewable energy. Um, this is one aspect that I'm trying to connect renewable energy to my water utilities in the sense that maybe I can deliver water with renewable energy. Um, that being said, that would make our processes more environmentally friendly and our cost of production goes down as well. Um, so I would say as a leader uh, for my community here in Scottport, Morrell and Rock Point, one of the major projects that I'm trying to focus on is energy sector and I'm trying to conjoin that with my utilities here and that's like maybe investigating solar fields um, possible windmills maybe some micro grids um, other all types of technology are, are up for discussion we just don't know what will be fitted for our for our size so um, I can see that being our next our next thing to look forward to in the future awesome um, can you tell me uh, a little bit about your community? Where, where is your community situated in, in terms of um, big cities or rural populations um, and um, the, the type of infrastructure that your community uh, has? I like to consider us like the little big guys. Like we're such a small community, but we're very functional. Uh, our infrastructure is, is constantly being upgraded and enhanced. Um, our systems are well above standards. Um, I, I think we're in a good place. And um, as our community grows, um, our infrastructure grows. So right now, as of today, um, I'm happy to, to be in the situation that we currently are. And what changes, other than um, uh, renewable energy, um, once you have renewable energy, once you have put these sort of, this futuristic idea of having renewable energy sort of 100% of the time, what other changes would you like to see in your community that can help it be um, more future forward? Um, one of the challenges, we live in a multiple climate environment. So in the summer, we have hot summers. In the winter, we have cold winters. So one of the things that I'd like to adapt with the enhancements of our um, future engagements is if we do um, manage to incorporate a massive energy project and have like we'll say you know, a solar field that's going to produce some energy for our community, we could alleviate the use of fossil fuels. You know, fossil fuels is our major source of heat here in the winter. So once we make these enhancements and in, in implement this solar technology we can switch over the heat elements in our in our residents housing we can switch from oil-based furnaces to maybe more energy efficient um, sources uh, electric heat and then we can retrofit all the old site houses to have this new types of heat and that would be one way and then we can eliminate the use of fossil fuels in our communities Oh, and then awesome. maybe and, and then make that initiative as well to um, incorporate self-charging stations for electric cars and then have that connected into our electrical grid as well. machines nowadays they have modern equipment like 
such as tractors, combines, and lots of stuff. A newer planter that is, it is like an older version, but pretty much new. process of mowing and tedding for hay, for baling. But before you bale, you have to rake it. Some equipment involved with hay baling is balers, tedders, and planters. They can be really dangerous because of all the moving parts. So, you see that big wooden tube there? That goes up through there and it carries hay bales up. Then the hay bales will go all the way up through there on that tube. And then through, through the circuit and then all the way down up there. And then that was just 30 years ago. Hay is really important for horses and cows and, ama and farm animals such as that to eat. It leads to insulate buildings and environment friendly. Come on, Gord. Let's go for my secret passageway. Hey, it's great! Some communities have buildings that are fully insulated with hay. It's not hay is not only good for animals to eat; it's also good for making small secret hideouts with it. Here is my mower. It, the mower mows grass and it's one of the equipment, the pieces of equipment that you use in making hay bales. The wheels adjust on it and the mower inside that in and then there's a bag in the bottom of it that catches all the grass. And the mower attaches to this tractor this tractor and pull the mower so that they can mow the lawn. This can only attach to a tractor because it has only one type of hinge on it that can only attach to a tractor. And this tractor can carry about 400 pounds of weight, maybe like three times that or it's, it's important to wear gloves uh, like this on a farm because it, it can be very dangerous.
Hi, I'm Rosalie and welcome to my community. This is Dorchester. There are a lot of things the community needs to make it a good, happy, healthy place to live. Today we're gonna to go explore what some of those things are. This is my school! Mr. Murray and his class are designing a community of the future project. Let's go inside and see what they're up to. Hi, Mr. Murray. Hey, Rosalie. Hi. Can we, can we go see your students community of the future project? Sure, come on in, let's go check it out. Okay, great. Oh, how nice of you. What have you built here? Homeless of those. Why did you build them? That's not a homeless. Okay, how did you get the idea of like this whole pattern sort of thing that you have here? Dela beans houses and Newfoundland. Is it edible? No. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Here, have a bite. No, that's okay. Okay. What, what, what do you have there in your hands? Wool. Why? From um, the whole lot of homeless. I've, I've, I've got a slice in. Why, where'd you get it? Um, a friend's from, from a friend. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Fascinating. Why is it important that you use sheep's wool for installation? Well, actually, in the future, I might use it for tax you need to put inside actual homeless shelters, maybe, that I'm going to build someday. Genius idea. It's a great idea for installation. For, for the future because wool is actually pretty warm and a lot of sheep have it for some odd reason, but like, okay. Genius idea. I just have to buy a lot of sheep. Gia, my buddy, my friend, what do you have here? This is our, the Dorchester River. Mm-hmm. Why is it blue? Um, we dyed it. Mm -hmm. Is it just going to be like that the whole entire time? Because I noticed this like a uh, um, pipe thing going on underneath. Yeah, so we have a motor that it's gonna suck in the water and it's gonna shoot it through the pipe and it's gonna shoot back into the water. Who came up with like the idea of getting flowing water? Me. I did. You're a genius. That's gonna be really cool. Yeah, and we're gonna have a water mill that moves and gives energy to a lot of the places around. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Why is it not like soaking all the cardboard? Because there's plastic around it and we taped all the plastic and put a bunch of the cardboard on top so it looks like it's just cardboard. Ah. I hope one day that the actual river that's chocolatey and disgusting will turn into this river that's all clear and blue and nice. What is this? Well, it's a solar panel. Basically, it's... So here we have this solar panel and then it's connected to this and then it's connected to this motherboard. And then as you can see, there's like a little light there. So then when we cover it, for, because it's a solar panel, it takes the light and turns into power. So if we cover the solar panel, now the light goes out. And theoretically, because there's a plug there, if we did put this into like a, like a phone or something, then we could plug in, then we could charge devices like phones and stuff using solar power. Okay, what grade are you in again? Grade five. How did you figure that all out? Well, I read so much books, I know all the words. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for showing me your project. My pleasure, Rosalie. Glad you could come in and check it out. I kind of got to go, though. <laughs> Bye. See ya. I hope you had fun making today. I know we did. What was your favorite part? Did you make along with us? We want to see your Maker Fun project. Share it. Visit us at brilliantlabs.ca to learn how. Stay brilliant. We'll see you next time.